Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial about Flix, an online learning and assessment solution designed for flat world knowledge by Lyrics Learning. Flix accompanies Flat World Knowledge's Financial Accounting Textbook by Joe Ben Hoyle and CJ Skender. In addition, Flix can accompany Principles of Economics, Microeconomics, or Macroeconomics textbooks by Libby Rittenberg and Tim Tregarthen. The following tutorial will walk through four specific parts of Flix. First, we'll look at what students get with the Flix program. Second, we'll look at what professors get with Flix. Third, we'll talk about customer support. And finally, we'll discuss how you can go about getting a demonstration of Flix set up or your own Flix account. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's jump into the student experience for the Rittenberg and Tregarthen Principles of Microeconomics course. You'll see here that I am actually logged in as an instructor, so I can see the instructor's toolbox. This particular area does not show for students, but the rest does. The first area you'll see is the study guide, which allows students to view an analysis of their mastery in the course. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. The second area is the lab information, which is where students access their homework. And the third is their quiz information, which is where students can access quizzes. We're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about the labs or the homework assignments. Because the power of Flix has a lot to do with the grading and the feedback that a student gets when he or she is performing their homework assignments. Here is a problem that asks that the student graph a demand and supply schedule. Let's take a look at this demand and supply schedule and graph it accordingly. You'll see here that the price per gallon is 7 for the quantity demanded of 65. You can see by scrolling over that the points are plotted for me on the graph. of the demand curve. If I pull down this menu, I can now plot the supply curve. For the sake of our demonstration today, I'm going to plot this supply curve incorrectly. Once I've plotted both of my curves, I'm asked to give the equilibrium price and quantity. Well, I know that equilibrium is where supply and demand intersect. By scrolling over that intersection point, I get the points where the intersection occurs. The equilibrium price of 12 and quantity of 40. Let's scroll down and submit just to see how the software gives us feedback. Once you've clicked submit, you will scroll down and you can see our two graphs. The red graph is my graph. It's marked in red because it's incorrect. The yellow graph is the correct graphing of the supply curve. If you look down at the grade, you'll see that I've plotted the demand curve correctly. The supply curve, on the other hand, I plotted incorrectly, and I lose two marks for that particular part. What's interesting is, is when I went to plot equilibrium, you can see that my answer was essentially wrong, but because I've correctly deduced equilibrium from my earlier answers, the program notes that I must know how to get equilibrium from my two supply and demand curves, but I had just plotted the supply curve incorrectly, giving me the wrong indication for equilibrium. Therefore, I don't lose any more points for this problem, but indeed, I'm given a little bit of instruction for how to better my grade in the future. You can see here the power of the feedback you get in the Flix program. Now then, labs can be completed at any point depending on when you set them up. Quizzes are the same way. Quizzes look exactly like labs do. However, they can be more constrained depending on how the instructor sets them up. And finally, another very powerful item with the Flix program for students is the study guide. If I click on the study guide, a window opens up that summarizes my levels of achievement in certain subject areas in economics. You can see here that I haven't really tried any problems based on demand, and that's why the bar graph is yellow. In supply, I have a certain amount of green, which means I've accomplished it, 
and a lot of red, which means I have a lot longer to go until I'll have completely mastered the concept of supply. And the same goes even more so for demand, supply, and equilibrium. However, you'll see here that I've done some work in the area correctly, a lot of work incorrectly, and there's some things I have not yet tackled. This is a great centralized location for students to understand how well they're doing in their understanding of the concepts. And at any point, they can click on practice to better that area of green on those bar graphs. The only other area of input for these bar graphs that can allow the student to change that level of green to become more and more across the bar is to continue to do work on their homework. The more homework that they complete correctly, the more green will show on those bar graphs and therefore they will be further along in their achievement of the different concept areas. Well, there you have it. A summary of the three parts that students see in the Flix program. Their study guide, their lab or homework area, and their quizzes. Now, let's move on to the instructor side. Whether you are adopting Flix for accounting or Flix for economics. The instructor side of the program is the same. The only difference would be the actual problems that you could assign. So for the sake of our demonstration today, I'm going to jump in to our Principles of Microeconomics course to show you the instructor side capabilities of the Flix software. As we mentioned before, in the student side presentation, the only difference between the instructor side and student side interface are the instructor's tools. The first part that we'll look at is the managing courses button under instructor's tools. I want to make it clear that one of the greatest things about Flix is the fact that it is so easy to use and get started with. Every single page not only has a dialog box for you to enter information, but it also has instructions right on the page. So if you forget or get confused, all you need to do is read the page to understand how to proceed. Right now, we're in the Manage Courses button. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the course information. This is just the place where that you can specify information about your course. You can also change the time zone so that your course assignments come due at the appropriate time for students in your time zone. Here's where you can view assignments for each chapter. Or if you choose to do assignments by week, you can create them and edit them here. I'll click on View and Edit, and it will bring us into the View and Edit lab screen. You will see, because I am in a Ready, Set, Go course, a bunch of labs are already set up for me. It is here where you can choose to edit them. You'll see that there's a start date an end date, the ability to change whether or not the homework assignment is required or optional, to give this particular homework assignment a number of attempts, to set the duration of this homework assignment, and to decide whether or not you will allow students to jump around in the questions by saying yes, they can split up the questions, or no, which makes it's such that the student would need to go from the first question to the second question to the third question in that exact order. One thing you'll want to note about our homework assignments and our quizzing is that these questions are all algorithmically generated. So students will receive the same question with different numbers. Now let's say you'd like to edit the questions in one of your labs. Let's click on lab four and then click on Edit Questions. It is here where you can make changes to the existing lab or you can review the questions to make sure they're what you'd like them to be. So go ahead and click on Chapter 4 and we'll say Putting Demand and Supply to Work and then of course you can click on Demand and Supply Shifting. By doing that, you actually see the question and the difficulty rating. You can add this question to the lab. You can even view this question by clicking on it and clicking Try Question. When you click on Try Question, it allows you to go through this problem just as a student would. So you can understand if this is appropriate for the homework assignment that you are creating or editing. 
You can always make changes to your questions order. by moving them up and down. And you can save this lab, exit this lab without saving, or reset this lab to the original lab that it was before you came here. It's all very easy. And if you ever were to get confused, all you need to do is scroll down and read the instructions. This particular text explains exactly how to set up labs and what all of the different settings mean. So there you have it. That's how you can edit labs in your course. Now, let's edit quizzes. Quizzes are slightly different. Quizzes have some different options. First, there's a start date and a due date. You can make this quiz required or optional, just like homework. You can give it a number of attempts, a duration, and then you can give it a password. You can do this for an extra level of protection such that a student might have to come in, show their ID, and give the password to the quiz proctor before taking the quiz. And then finally, there's the ability to hide feedback. You can hide feedback for students until everyone in the course has taken the quiz, or you can allow students to see feedback at the exact time when they submit their question. That's completely up to you. If you have any questions about how to set these parameters, again, by scrolling down and reading the text, that flicks and lyrics provide, you can get a better understanding and remind yourself on how to set up quizzes. Putting questions in quizzes is the exact same as putting questions into homework, and you saw how easy that was already. So there you have it. That's how you create and view or edit labs and quizzes. Here's a place where you can manage student grades. This just allows you to check off what you'd like to appear in the fields and you can always pull grades for labs or quizzes. By clicking on the student grade report, the report will come up for you to review. You can always export this information into comma delimited files and download them for posting or for putting into different places like your learning management system or in hard copy if you'd like. In the statistics section, you can view statistics for different labs that have been pre-created for this course or ones that you create. When you view statistics, you're simply given information about each question in the lab and how students are performing on that. This helps you to better understand what kind of questions are working for your students or maybe where you need to do more review, etc. So there you have it. That's pretty easy. That's the Manage Courses button. Here's an even easier button, which is Manage Students. If you click on the Manage Students button, you come to a page that allows you to do different things for your students. You can view them, you can see what course they're in, you can print off a list of them, and of course the most important thing is you can view their grades individually, so if a student comes into your class, you can reset a student's login or password in case he or she has misplaced it or forgotten it, and you can grant extensions and extra time for each lab so for students who have extenuating circumstances or students where you don't wish to give a limit on their assignments or quizzes. And then finally, you can view or revoke extensions under this button. Again, all very intuitive, all very easy to use and to work with in the Flix product. So that's it. Those are the pieces of the puzzle that will allow you to create great courses for your students. And remember, you really don't need to create a course at all if you adopt one of our Ready, Set, Go courses. Our Ready, Set, Go courses have labs already set up for you where students can practice and turn in homework to get a grade in your course. Now, let's talk a little bit about customer support with the Flix program. If you or your students need to get help using Flix at any time, there's a couple of places where they can do that. First of all, if a student is in the product itself and needs help, they can simply click on the Help menu. The Help button is on every page in the Flix program. This brings up an FAQ that can allow some students to do some self-help if they'd like. Now, I know not all students want self-help, 
If they click on contact, they also get a screen full of some email addresses where they can email student support. The Lyric staff is available seven days a week and will reply to inquiries within 24 hours. And by the way, that goes the same for you. If you have any questions while you're working in the Flix program, by clicking on the Contact Us link, you can get the instructor's support email address where you can request support from the Lyric staff. Now, when you're in Flatworld Knowledge's website, all you need to do is click on the Contact Us button under the Help menu. Once you click there, you can see our Get Help Now box, which will allow you to call us, email us, or start a live chat to get assistance. Often, getting help at Flat World Knowledge is best when a student is having trouble actually making the purchase of the product. Anytime you have questions about the functionality of the Flix product, or if it has something to do with content or grades, the best place to contact the staff is underneath the contact link. There it is. All the ways that you can get customer support through Lyrics and Flat World Knowledge for the Flix product. Now let's move on how you can get started today. Well, if you're watching this video, then you've probably found your way to our flatworldknowledge.com slash Flix demo video page. From that page, you'll see two buttons. By clicking on the Try Flix button, you'll be able to try Flix out as a student. You can sample a problem that's here, and there's some information about that problem in the green boxes as you scroll down on this page. Once you've decided that you'd like to get a little bit more in depth with Flix, you will want to click on the Get Flix button. This takes you to a registration form. It's pretty basic. You just fill in your information about yourself and your course. But where it gets interesting is under assignment information. You can choose to either get Ready, Set, Go assignments, custom assignments, or self-serve assignments. Self-serve assessments have the most control. You would create your assignments and quizzes on your own from our list of preloaded questions. Custom assignments are unique. All you need to do is send your course outline into Lyrics Learning, and they will create the assignments for you based on the material you cover in your syllabus. And then finally, our Ready, Set, Go assignments are turnkey. We have preloaded about 10 questions per chapter for homework assignments for you to use in your class. And all of these questions match the book chapters. You'll wanna make sure you specify which kind of assignments you would like set up for your course. And finally, any special requests. As you can see, getting started with Flix is very easy. And finally, if you would like to speak with a representative about Flix, all you need to do is contact us at Flix at flatworldknowledge.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for spending time with us today to learn about Flix for economics and for accounting. We'd love to work with you. So thanks again from all of your friends here at Flat World Knowledge.